Hello and welcome to the first lesson in land law. What we're going to do in this first lesson is take a very, very, very brief overview of the kind of things we're going to be talking about when we're talking about land law. Because land law is actually quite complicated and quite difficult, arguably, you know, a lot of people would say it's the most difficult, it's important that we spend a lot of time going over the basic introductory points and then also going over the sort of historical background towards land law and then then we start to get into the sort of technical areas of land law talking about things like registered and unregistered land the freehold estate leasehold estate mortgages you know all these kind of things so this lesson is going to be a very brief overview as to the kind of things we're going to be talking about when we talk about land law so the first question really is what does land law study what is land law and I'll give a little bit of a, a misleading definition here because I'm talking about land law in relation to the regulation and management of people's relationship and enjoyment of property. However, this could be seen as a definition of property law. Now, property law is something that's different to land law, but land law can be described more as a subset of property law. Okay, so property law, as we know, is the law that relates to the legal um, relationship, the, the regulation and management of people's relationship with property, you know, property, whatever the property may be. Land law is specifically talking about land because land is a, a very different type of commodity compared to other um, properties that we might be talking about within property law. So it's one's ability to enjoy and to um, regulate um, and have the rights over um, different areas of land and these kind of rights the rights to um, land whether it's rights to ownership of land or rights to you know other kind of things within land um, these are called proprietary rights okay and again i'm just i just you know made another point there when i talk about the ownership of land um in reality, when we're talking about ownership of land, we are not actually talking about ownership of land because technically, all land, all land is owned uh, by the crown. And we're going to talk about why this is the case, uh, why um, and the historical development of this in the next lesson. But just to be noted here, when I say owning land, we're really talking about things like estates in land estates in land or interests in land these kind of things uh, talk about are relating um, to the proprietary interests and proprietary rights of individuals over land so these are the kind of technical details that really should be uh, fleshed out and understood before we start looking at the uh, more technical actual legal um, principles and legal framework of land law so what do we mean by proprietary rights? Well, proprietary rights can exist on some kind of a very broad spectrum. Okay, They're a very broad way of defining a number of different things. They can be very extensive, Okay, like the right to use and possess land at the exclusion of anybody else. So, you know, you know, if you own the land in which your, you know, your house is built, if you have a proprietary interest uh, over that right, over that land, sorry, um, that's quite an extensive proprietary right. However, you could also have very narrow interests, uh, proprietary interests, things like the right to fish over a certain area of land. So they relate to um, what you can and cannot control uh, and what you can and cannot do over the land that, um, you know, that you physically possess. And they relate to the rights um, you possess over land owned by somebody else as well. We, have, we can talk about um, rights that you have over somebody else's land. And so, therefore, we can also note that proprietary rights can be numerous over one piece of land. This is one uh, way we can distinguish between um, land law as a subset of property law. Okay, If I own a laptop, for example, generally I am the sole owner of that laptop. Nobody really has a right to, um, to have or to use that laptop unless I gave them permission. However, proprietary rights can be numerous over a single piece of land. You could have a land that somebody um, 
for you know for all intents and purposes owns although as i just noted technically all all land is owned by the crown but we could have a land that you know let's just say for all intents and purposes somebody owns but then other people may have rights to um walk uh, uh, and, and walk over that land so these are the kinds of interests and rights that we can talk about so like i said here you know right for a person um, to restrict building on said land right for a person to walk over the land right for a person to own the land and another way we can distinguish land law from from property law as a as a broader subset is that land is is a very unique commodity land isn't like a laptop or phones or apples or things like that it's very unique okay there's a number of unique conditions and unique features that sets it out from other other commodities which makes the regulation of uh, regulation of land in land law um very very different to just property law as a whole okay so for example no one piece of land is the same unlike say apples you know you can buy red apples and green apples but they're you know they're largely the same kind of um, product um land comes in a very large variety of shapes and sizes as such proprietary uh, rights offer a number of assurances that would not be extended to ordinary properties okay moreover if too many proprietary rights are exercised over a single piece of land then that land can be said to be overburdened and therefore represent an unattractive investment and land itself is very different to other commodities in the fact that it's generally very expensive you know uh with all be with it being said you know a laptop is quite expensive but compared to a piece of land it's it's very different um and another thing uh, uh, uh we should be talking about the sort of balance that is struck where we have proprietary rights that and we don't have an overburden overburdening of said proprietary rights over a piece of land a very good example of a right to land that isn't a proprietary right to land is a proprietary in nature is the idea of a license and we're going to be talking about licenses later on as well so this is a very very broad definition a very broad overview of what we're going to be talking about when we study in land law in the next lesson we're going to talk about the historical development of land law and the way in which land has been viewed um over you know the, uh, effectively a thousand years of, of english history and how we've come to a point now where we have estates and interests in land and then in the next and then we're going to start to look in the next series of lessons at registered unregistered land leasehold estates freeholder estates etc 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 and you know start to cover the the, the very in-depth legal analysis of all of these concepts